Hello. Um, so I just I just got home from regionals, like literally a couple couple minutes ago, um, and I figured I wanted to do a team report on my Farfetch team and on the team I used to place top four today. Uh, I'm really tired, so um, might be a little lower energy than normal, but I'm gonna do my best just to walk you through the team I used because I know a lot of people wanted to do the Farfetch team, and it's it's more or less the same team, um, with the exception that uh, I have Smeargle over Farfetch this this weekend. Um, at uh, Richmond Regional. So let's just jump into it. Um, so I I basically decided that I didn't really want to spend too much time preparing for this tournament, um, for either tournament, Atlantic City or Richmond Regionals. Um, I, I think Ultra is a format where um, it, a lot of it is down to comfortability with the team. Um, there's so many different matchups and so many different archetypes that uh, it's really, it's really, a lot of how well your team does depends on uh, the matchups you play against. So it's sometimes better to know your win conditions and know um, what you're trying to a to aim at, rather than trying to have a team that beats everything, which is very different than 2016. So with that in mind, I I didn't really want to spend a ton of time preparing. I have other stuff going on in my life, uh, and I didn't like I, I just didn't want to play ultra. So I wanted I just wanted to have fun. Um, so I started with Ditto. I thought Ditto is a, I think Ditto is a pretty good Pokemon in the restricted formats. Um, being able to transform into any of your opponent's Pokemon, albeit with a lower HP stat, it's just, it's a very cool Pokemon to use. You can do some really cool stuff with it. And yeah, uh, the EVs, I think I ended up actually using different EVs. Trey advised me. I think I was like 244 speed stat. I don't know. It was something around here. Um, yeah, Ditto is a pretty straightforward Pokemon. Uh, so I knew I wanted to use Ditto, and originally I was using it with Rayogre just because I'm more comfortable with that, but I decided that Groudon and Xerneas made more sense. Um, this is the Groudon I used. I actually really liked it. Stomping Tantrum was a really great addition to the game for the reason that Precipice Blades, it's just so inaccurate. Um, and yeah, I know some people like Roar, I know some people like Swords Dance. I really like Stomping Tantrum. It doubles in power a lot. For example, if your opponent protects and switches in a, a ground immune mon, then you have a doubled stomping tantrum. I think Trey has a whole video up on up on his channel about stomping tantrum, but it actually activates a lot more than you'd expect. Um, this weekend, I okoda stack attack through Shukaberry uh, because I had it was against Nils during Swiss, and um, it was a situation where his Excel Guard final gambited my ground on, leaving it with two HP. Um, hit, and then mm, my partner Pokemon, what was it? Don't remember what it was, but maybe let's say Salamence and Tailwind. So Salamence KOs um, Tapu Lele with Double Edge, and then Stack Attacker comes in, and oh sorry, so both Excelgor and Lele faint before Groudon gets to attack because Excelgor final gambited and Lele, um, Lele died to Fire or to Double Edge, and so then uh, Groudon's Fire Punch was redirected into nothing, and so it failed, and so then Stack Attacker came in and I stomped it and tripled it into Code, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, so I really like this Groudon. The spread, uh, it leaves opposing Groudon Earth Power, and then I put Summon Speed, um, and the rest in attack. Uh, pretty straightforward. Fire Punch, Precipice Blades, standard on a physical Groudon, and then Stomping Tantrum. I don't know anything about Xerneas. I I really don't know about Eevees. I know that you're supposed to run some bulk, but I, I didn't. Um, this is just standard Xerneas. I don't have that much to say about it. It was okay. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing Pokemon, but it's... I played a lot of Psy, like, I played so much, like, Psy Spam this weekend, like, I didn't play a single other Xerneas. I think it was better in, in Atlantic City, as I recall. Uh, it's just, you know, it, there's nothing really fancy about this, it just does what it's meant to do. Um, I had a Smeargle because I wanted, I don't know, I just wanted to have fun, and by have fun, I mean make other people not have fun. I hate Smeargle, um, it's such, it's such a stupid Pokemon. I actually meant to change this to Spore, Lovely Kiss to Spore, but I just didn't feel like it, so I didn't. <laughs> I did miss a Lovely Kiss at some point this week, at least one, um. But I don't think it mattered in that game. Um, and I think I did Lovely Kiss of Venusaur. So maybe in the end, Lovely Kiss was the right choice. But Lovely Kiss is so dumb. Uh, this is the, the change that I made over Farfetch'd um, in the team originally. Uh, original, well, the original team actually was the first six. Then I decided I wanted to use Farfetch'd. And then, yeah, for I did it in Atlantic City. And now that we went to Richmond, I was like, okay, let me try Smeargle. Uh, Spiky Shield, Lovely Kiss, Follow Me. I think Lovely Kiss and Follow Me are mandatory. I personally really like having Spiky Shield and Smeargle. I think it, it extends its longevity and allows you to play around with Moody more. Um, Transform probably isn't optimal, but since I had Ditto, I thought it'd be really funny to just have, like, Transform team. So, that's why I have Transform. I think probably Fake Out would have been better. Given that I, if I had known what I was playing against this weekend, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know what I would have used. Um, yeah, I honestly don't know what I would have used over Transform. Like, maybe, the thing is, like, Psychic Terrain was up. Overall, this team just wasn't very good. Like, it had some scary mo like scary team members, and it was, like, 
there were things that it could do that were scary, but overall, it just wasn't cohesive. Like, the, it didn't have anything for sleep. Honestly, I think I'd run Crafty Shield over Transform. I think I would run Crafty Shield over Transform, because sleep is a real problem for this team, and it, it, I don't really have anything for it. Sleep Powder Venusaur, Sleep Powder Jump Off, those, were, those things were really hard for my team. And the matches that I lost, one of them, the opponent had a Venusaur, and one of them, I just lost straight up. Um, yeah. So yeah, probably Crafty Shield would have been better, but I wasn't really trying to build a good team. I was just trying to have fun. Um, I really like the Salamence. I... Oh, that's wrong. Sorry. I was experimenting doing... Sorry. I, I was I was testing, or I was thinking about doing this, but instead I did this. Uh, I think originally I was going to run Hyper Voice and Naive, but then I didn't want to... I already had the Salamence, so I didn't want to change it, but... Um, or I didn't want to get a new one, but... Yeah, so basically, Protect Double Edge, Earthquake, Tailwind. Protect Double Edge and Tailwind, I think, are, are, are mandatory. Uh, Hyper Voice doesn't do very much damage. I actually... Earthquake I ended up using quite a bit this weekend. Uh, it's just... It's just... It's not great, it's not that strong, but there are there are many Pokemon that are weak to ground. For example, um, it didn't end up working, but there was a time where in Swiss, uh, I was going to use Earthquake with Salamence to pop Stack Attack a Shookaberry, and then Precipice Blades to KO the Stack Attack on the same turn. However, the Lele Choice Scarf, and I didn't Mega Evolve my Salamence, so I felt like a genius. I was like, okay, like his Lele is locked into Psychic with Choice Scarf, my ground will survive it, just in case like it does a lot of damage, I'm going to... Stay non-mega, use Earthquake to proc a Shookaberry, and then KO. So I went for Earthquake, but the Psychic crit my Groudon and left it with like 20 HP, so then Earthquake KO'd anyway. Um, but yeah, Earthquake was really good. There's a ton of stack attack in the metagame right now, so being able to hit that. Having a spread move is nice. Um, being able to, to hit Incineroar for a little bit of damage is nice. Uh, Groudon, it hits for super effective damage. Type of Cocoa, it hits for super effective damage. Overall, it's just like a solid spread move, and even though this team doesn't have anything like a partner that's immune to it, I just earthquaked myself. I didn't care. Uh, often. <laughs> Actually, this team did have a partner when I had a Farfetch, so. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Incineroar. This is a spread that I was using post Berlin Internets, and I just had it already, so I just used it. Um, I have no idea what it does. So I know the speed lives. I think it's Eevee to live Ultra to Cross Earth Power. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. The speed outspeeds Gengar and Coco and Tailwind, and it goes one point faster than that. Uh, this actually outsped Nils' Groudon, <laughs> funnily enough, which is, ri like, ridiculous, but, yeah, so this is a very fast Incineroar. I actually really like this Incineroar. Uh, it pairs really well with Tailwind Pokemon. Uh, you're always faster than other Incineroar. I've never seen an Incineroar faster than this, which can be nice for Fake Out. This weekend didn't matter too much because of stupid terrain, but whatever. Um, but yeah, you're always faster. It's just an offensive Pokemon. Originally, I paired this thing with Yveltal because... It had some crazy calcs on it. And actually, I believe this is pretty close or the exact same Incineroar I ran in um, at Madison Regionals where I got top four. Because the cool thing about this Incineroar is um, it's very offensive. And, and Z-Dark, I paired this thing with Yveltal originally, like I mentioned. And, and the idea was I would fake out Tailwind. And then, like, Z-Dark with Dark Aura is... Or Incineum Z with Dark Aura is, like, incredibly powerful like disgustingly powerful like i ko'd a coco with z uh Incinium z and foul play before um i think at oko's rayquaza it could it could ko kyogre i'm not super familiar with the calcs on it, on it but that's all dark aura boosted so my this incinera wasn't as strong but just having um originally i think i had av incinera then i tried berry incinera but then I, I didn't have a z move on the team and i figured like i'd rather just have an offensive incinera and i, I never feel like incinera needs berry in this format so um yeah uh, I ran Protect. I'm really glad I did. At, at, uh, sorry, so the changes between Ma between um, Atlantic City and here were Smeargle over Farfetch'd, and then Incinero Salamence was the theme, and then I had Roar at Atlantic City, because when I was running Bulky uh, Incineroar, I had Roar in it. But there's no point in running Roar on this team. Like, first of all, you kind of want their Xerneas to set up, because, yeah, like, you have Ditto, and if they have Xerneas, you're probably going to bring Ditto, and also... Roar, it wasn't bulky enough to live plus two Moonblast anyway, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might have been better, like, there were some times where I struggled with Trick Room this weekend, so maybe in that case it would have been better, but I, it's, you know, kind of hindsight, uh, 2020, hindsight 50-50. And then lastly, the star of the show, Farfetch'd, I believe I brought Farfetch'd to four games and he won three of them. Well, he was, he was a member of the team that won three of the games. I don't know why I used Farfetch'd. Originally, I wanted to use Stick because it's cool, but, um... It's not very good. Farfetch dies to... Even with max HP and max special defense, Farfetch still dies to, like, Xerneas Moonblast and, like, Sludge Bomb from Mega Gengar. So, I gave a Focus Sash. Uh, this was over Smeargle. This... He wasn't... He wasn't great. There were... He had moments. Um, like, Tommy Coolina was playing against him, and he led Lele Necrozma, and I led Farfetch Incineroar, and I went for Z-Dark into Ultra Necrozma, and he doubled Farfetch'd, and so I traded Farfetch for Ultra Necrozma, so that was a case uh, of, of Farfetch being good, but... Yeah, overall, Farfetch'd, 
it's really funny, but not very strong, unfortunately. But he, you know, he gave the team spirit. Um, I mean, I got the same number of wins and losses in Swiss in both tournaments, so he wasn't that much worse than, uh, <laughs> than Smeargle. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Brave Bird Return, I don't really know what to tell you. I think in the end I used Frustration as it returned. Um, yeah, I really don't know what to tell you. He was just, he was just a bird. He tried his best. He did, I mean, he didn't do bad. My opponents were very confused, and Defiant is a really good ability. I had a knack for leading him into Intimidate Pokemon, giving him an instant boost. He's not, like, crazy strong, but he does more damage than you'd expect. Um, but yeah, basically, if you're wondering why I used Farfetch'd, I don't really know. I think I saw the Surfetch trailer, and one of my best friends is Jive Time, and he loves Farfetch'd, so, like, they were building teams with it for singles, because, like, everyone was hype about Farfetch'd again, so I was like, yeah, why not? Um... Oh yeah, my spreads. Do I have any spreads to talk about? I told you about Groudon, Xerneas, Smeargle, Max Max, Mence Max Max, and Cinder I mentioned, yeah. Max Max on Farfetch'd. Um, but yeah, he did well. He got me 60 points, so he's on, he's on the map. He did well. Um, I just think it's funny because this is a format where, like, the Pokemon are so powerful and Farfetch'd is so small in-game. Like, I imagine Farfetch'd was just like, this is what Jive Time said to me. He was, I was complaining about how bad Farfetch'd was and he was like, to be fair, Farfetch'd hasn't had to do anything. Farfetch has just been chilling in box 7. He's just been sitting there. He hasn't had to do anything, right? And you took him out of box 7, sure. But you didn't take him out in an easy metagame. Farfetch first time on the battlefield, and he looks out, and he's up against Primal Groudon and Lunala. Right? These things, like... Like, Groudon is gonna, like, evaporate all the water. Right? That's kind of a... That's kind of a problem for things that drink water, right? And Farfetch doesn't evaporate anything, except for my opponent's morale. So... While that is valuable, you have to imagine that Farfetch'd, he really is trying his best, but he was not, he was not prepared for the task at hand. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna go eat some food. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I will do team reports whenever I have a team that I feel was worth sharing or do well enough with. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and to everyone who supported me this weekend. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Peace.